really important in our world today. You can use them to fix things that are broken, such as the Venus de Milo here. <laughs> it's also the only way you can stick materials which are very different together. Um, animals have perfected the art of sticking. So geckos, for example, use physics to stick to very shiny surfaces. They can stick upside down. They can stick to the ceiling by a single toe. The way they do this is they've got billions of tiny pads called spatulae on their feet, and that allows them to come into very close contact with the surface, and these uh, chemical attractions, or sorry, physical attractions called van der Waals forces come into play. Now, if you're a gecko, that's fine because you're on land, but what about underwater? Geckos um, are related to frogs, and there's a kind of frog called the torrent frog, which lives in a waterfall. These frogs are actually very good at walking on near vertical surfaces, but as soon as the surface becomes very vertical or overhangs, they fall off. And that's because um, underwater or in wet places, chemical means are necessary. You know what happens when you use super glue on a wet or even damp surface, it peels off. That's because the glue sticks on the water rather than in the water, just like Jesus is on the water rather than in the water in this picture. But lots of marine animals have perfected the art of gluing underwater. This is a sea cucumber which is related to starfish. It produces sticky tentacles to capture its prey. Other animals, such as mussels, produce glues. The beard or the byssus of the mussel it's a long thread with a sticky adhesive pad on the end, and this is sticky enough to keep the muscle in situ even in very wave-exposed coasts. Um, there are other kinds of barnacles that stick. This is a sandcastle worm, which sticks billions of grains of sand together and even creates these huge reefs using billions of grains of sand. The way it does this is very efficient. It's got a little building organ on its ventral surface under its head, and it uses just two dabs of glue on each sand grain in the same way as a big bricklayer will put two layers of cement on a brick and it builds up its tubes in that manner. Perhaps the most famous animals for sticking underwater are barnacles. They have an adhesive cement which is on the undersurface and this allows them to stick to uh, position, one position permanently. Some barnacles are very, very fussy about where they'll stick. So these coronula barnacles stick specifically to grey whales, but other barnacles will stick to anything. Now, these coronula, by the way, um, can stick to whales even though the whale is constantly exfoliating layers of skin, which is quite amazing. <coughs> these are stalk barnacles, and they're far more opportunistic. They'll stick to anything. So they stick to algae in this case. They can stick to metal. They can stick to glass. They can stick to wood they can stick to fur or feathers. How do these animals all stick underwater? The way they do it is they use protein. And one question we might ask is, do they all use the same kinds of protein or do different animals use different kinds of protein to stick underwater? Well, it so happens that most of the animals I've been talking to you about use the same kind of protein. This is a modified amino acid, which is a tiny chunk of protein which many of the animals I've just shown you use to stick underwater. However, barnacles do not use the same system. They have a unique system. We don't understand it yet, but it's different from the system that most other animals use. So I guess the question is, what can these glues do for us? <laughs> um, the uh, life under the sea is saline, and the human body is also a saline environment. It's wet and it's got salt in it. So nature may have engineered glues which work in a saline environment that could be applied in surgery. And these would be far more biocompatible and also far greener to produce than synthetic glues which are based on organic solvents. And the, in fact, glues which have been inspired by mussels are already being tested in the lab. They've been used to suture up or to act as a sealant in deep wounds like um, arteries, but also in the treatment of diabetes in pancreatic islet transplantation. 
Saturday, the 12th of February, in two days' time, is Darwin Day. It's the global uh, celebration of science and reason. And Charles Darwin spent nine years of his life contemplating barnacles, and look where that left him. Thank you. <laughs>